let me introduce you to the AI system of RPG Builder 2.0. As you can see, it comes with many independent systems which are all connected together in certain ways. I made this small document here, which is going to help us through this video to visualize the way AI and NPCs are structured. And I'm going to go back and forth between this and the editor. So as I'm teaching you, I'm also showing where those things are in the editor. This should make it very intuitive and already get you started and used to this uh, new AI system. So as we can see at the very top, we have an NPC. This is really the end thing. Uh, after setting up all those things, it will all be attached to an NPC. And an NPC is what is actually spawned in the world, right? And based on all those things, it will look a certain way, behave a certain way, and have uh, certain actions, abilities, and so on. So here, let's look at AI NPC. We are going to be looking at the bear mostly in this video, but I'm also going to give other examples as I'm explaining things. Now, uh, don't um, be surprised if I'm skipping over a certain field because this is not the point of this video. This is not an in-depth look. It's really explaining to you how things work. I'm going to make dedicated videos later about every single one of those things. And then this is where I'm going to explain all those fields one by one. So let's take a look at what an NPC is connected to. Here it's actually connected to only one thing and it is its phases and its appearances. And we can find these here. As you can see, it is a list. We can have as many phases as we want on our NPCs or bosses. And we can also, of course, have only one. I think a lot of normal mobs will probably just have one phase, uh, but it's really up to you. And now the cool part about it is, as you can see, each phase has a phase template attached to it and an NPC preset. NPC preset is what we can see here. So let's get this one out of the way. Let's take a look at what those are. An NPC preset is mainly the way the NPC looks, but not only. As you can see here, we have a visual and here we have a bare prefab. So this is basically going to be the model, right? This could be a dragon, anything you want. It scales, the position inside, extra. We also have uh, settings here on how its nameplate should be, what kind of animator it should have, what kind of avatar it should use, and so on, right? We also have settings for the nav mesh and what kind of collider it should use, the size of the collider, and so on. So as you can see here, we have a bunch of presets which are basically making it very easy for us now to create a new NPC attach, for example, a skeleton preset and beam, that's it. We don't have to recreate every time the look of a skeleton, its uh, collider setting and so on. This is ready to use on as many NPCs and phases as we want. Now, what else is there in phases and appearances? Here, of course, the next um, obvious thing is the actual phase. So what is this phase? Uh, what kind of data does it have? And in this case, we see that we have actions and behavior. So let's take a look at what the bare phase here is right here. Under AI and phases, we have our bare phase. You can have as many as you want, extra, but we're going to be taking a look at the bare one. As I said, I'm not going to cover all settings, only the things on this document, and you will see that it's going to be a lot of information already. So what is this potential behavior um, section here? As you can see here, the bear only has one potential behavior. This means that when it spawns, it is, or rather, when it enters this phase, it's not only when it's spawning, but it's whenever it's entering a new phase, it's going to have a behavior assigned, right? And in this case, it only has one available. So no matter what, this phase will always assign the bear behavior here. But what if we wanted, for example, to have an orc camp in the world? And in this camp, you have orc warriors, right? What if we wanted those orc NPCs? So we would use one NPC only. This could be an orc, for example. But the same NPC could have many, many different uh, behaviors. So the way you would do it here is to have more than one behavior. If you go ahead and add four, for example, and assign different behavior here, you can see that we have things such as flee, patrol, static, circle, and so on. Again, those things are going to be explained better in other videos, but I think you get the idea. So you could have one orc NPC without having to create other NPC, they could behave differently. And one of those behaviors will be picked when they um, 
enter their phase. So this is unique to each NPC. So here, for example, we could have uh, Berserker, Scared, and Brave, right? Let's say that the Orc Warrior had three available behavior, which means that every time an Orc Warrior will spawn and enter this phase, it will pick one out of three uh, behavior, only one, right? So for example, uh, if we spawn 10, there could be five Berserker, two Scared, and three Brave one, right? And in this case, Berserker could be a very good warrior. It will be uh, circling its target. It will be uh, taking care of its positioning, but it will never, um, never leave the fight, right? Now, the scared one could be, uh, I don't know, maybe not really circling the target, just kind of standing here, fighting back a little bit, but uh, based on a certain condition, it could start fleeing after uh, a bit. And then when it starts fleeing, it calls for help and aggro some other orcs, you know, coming to you. And the brave one could maybe just be standing right in front of you, not really taking any uh, attention to its positioning and just fight until it dies or until you die. So you could have those 10 orc warriors spawning, one NPC, but it could behave completely differently, move around differently, and so on. Now, there is another interesting thing in the behaviors. We have abilities here. So you can see that abilities are not in the phase, they are in the behavior. So if we look at the behavior here, as you can see, we can find again the patrol, flea, circle, etc. But if we look at the bear one, again, I'm not going to cover all of this. The only thing I'm going to say is, as you can see, a behavior is basically a collection of AI states. So you have states such as roaming, chasing, um, being in combat, fighting, walking backward. You can even have something fleeing, you know, here. And you can also have something like a static NPC, right? In this case, this will never move. It doesn't have a chase state, it doesn't have a combat state, it doesn't have a flee state, etc. It doesn't even have abilities and so on. So you have quite a lot of freedom on how you can create those behaviors. But let's go back to uh, the bear behavior. Let's imagine that we're looking at the behavior of one of the orc. Now, as you can see, uh, we also have a potential ability list here, which is what we see right here. In this case, uh, when this phase and this behavior is entered, it only has one um, ability list option. So it will only select this ability list, right? But again, just like phases can have potential behaviors, behaviors can have potential ability list. So here we could assign as many ability lists as we want and only one will be picked by this NPC, okay? And if we look at phase abilities, it goes way further um, in customization option. Because here you see that not only an ability list can have as many abilities as we want, we could also limit the amount that's actually given. So let's say you add like 20 abilities, but here you decide that only five of those can be picked. And in this case, you could have them being optional. Right now, they will all be added, but if they are optional, you can see that now we have a bar under them that let us define how much chance do they have to be picked. So in this case, this one could be all the time. This one could be super rare, maybe like a very unique ability that's almost never present on this boss or mob, then uh, this kind of chance extra. And so as a recap right now, uh, just to really put things back in perspective, we can have one NPC which has as many phases as we want. Each phase can completely change the visual appearance, the animation, the settings of the collider and nav mesh of this NPC. Each phase has its own data. So whenever a new phase is entered, this NPC is going to pick one behavior from its behavior list. And when one behavior is active, it is going to be able to pick one ability list from its potential ability list. And when we picked one of those ability lists, let's say this one, we then have even more uh, customization um, option here because it will not assign all abilities. It will pick randomly. So going back again to the orc example, you can see that we could have 10 orc warriors spawning in an um, orc camp. They could all move and behave and fight differently based on their behavior. But they could also all have a different ability list. And even if they pick the same ability list, even if like, let's say, four of the orc 
uh, randomly selected the same ability list, they will still randomly pick abilities from this ability list, meaning that even if they pick the same ability list, they still might not end up with the same active abilities and things they can use. So uh, I think you start to get the idea on how in-depth and how, uh, how much freedom you have with this AI and NPC system. Um, that's what we call an actual NPC system or AI system overall. That's why I completely uh, scrapped the system from 1.1 um, and designed and coded this completely new system in 2.0. That's something I really wanted to do for a while and it took some time to structure and to think of and to make it as easy as possible to use. As you can imagine, we can't have a system as in-depth as this without paying the cost of it being a little bit more complicated to understand at first. I totally get it if it might be a bit confusing for you at first. Totally um, nothing wrong with that, but you will get used to it very quickly and you will just love it as soon as you do. Now, there is just one thing we haven't talked about yet when it comes to phases, it's the actions. So if I go back to phases now, you see that here we have an action template field. This is optional, you don't have to, but this basically lets you trigger as many actions as you want when you either enter or exit a phase. And so those actions, let's just focus on uh, one here, um, have optional requirements. So you could very well just have one of those, um, some actions triggered on enter with no requirement. So no matter what, they will always trigger, right? But if you wanted to, you could check requirement on the caster, so the NPC, or its target. And those requirements are under templates, requirements, and as you can see, you can have hundreds of those. And there are, you know, there are going to be videos made specially on those as well. But yeah, you have hundreds of options here. Now, if we go back to phase action, um, and if we look at the actual action part, right, what is actually going to be triggered either when there are no requirements or when the requirements are met. Again, same in templates, game actions. Here you have hundreds of options of things that could be. So very easily, let's say if I do this and set um, hour to 22, um, for example, if I go ahead, say this and apply this to an NPC, it could enter its phase and set the time of the, you know, the, of the scene to uh, 10 p.m. So it will now become dark or it could even uh, slow the time down or speed it up or something. But this is just a time example. You have all those things available, right? So yeah, that's pretty much what um, phase actions are. And like I said, they can be at the beginning or at the end of a phase, which is um, very, very useful. So I feel like this video is already a bit too long for an introduction, but there is almost no way to explain such a massive system in uh, a shorter time without basically skipping through even more things. Because as you see, um, as you saw my bad, in this video, I really, really skipped a lot of things here. I didn't explain most of those things and what they actually do. I didn't even look at the other options from NPCs, custom stats, loot tables, reward and so on. So yeah. Uh, they will have their own videos, definitely uh, count on this. It's going to be dedicated videos on each of the systems. I'm going to take my time to do them because as you can see, it's quite complex at first and I want them to be as easy to understand as possible. Even this one, I recorded it quite a few times before, um, well, before actually deciding that this one was the one, but yeah. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know your favorite part about all this. Uh, if you have any question, it's better to contact me on Discord and uh, see you in the next video.